Russia's war in Ukraine continues with disappointments for the Kremlin. Russian President Vladimir Putin has also fired the last general he appointed in Ukraine. After successive defeats, Solovkin, who was dispatched from Syria to Ukraine as a war beast and to whom Vladimir Putin handed over the most important task, was dismissed as the commander-in-chief of the front line. This was recorded as the 13th commander fired by Vladimir Putin. The fact that Putin fires a new general after each defeat means that the political and military fire in the Kremlin is getting larger every day because there are intelligence reports that his dismissed commanders will lead a movement against him by contacting Russian partisans. We will convey to you the death spiral and the reasons behind this move with all its mystery and we will consolidate the heavy defeats of the melting Russian army in Ukraine with the Ukrainian victories. But first, let's take a look at the hottest spot of the front, which has been heating up lately. Then, let's make our comments by examining the details and reasons of the last event. In the ongoing operations of the Ukrainian armed forces, the Russian army continues to hit the fronts fiercely. In recent days, the attacks by the Ukrainian armed forces in the northern part of Luhansk have begun to increase. Ukrainian warriors are making one attack after another over the Kharkiv Oblast. It puts pressure on the northern part of Donbas, especially through Chuhiv, Alaklia, Izium and Lyman. The uprisings carried out by Ukrainian partisans in the Svatova and Kremina regions also bring the crisis of the Russian army to its peak. Due to these crises, Russia lost Kherson and many regions along with it. On October 8th, Solovkin, who was given full control of the war by Vladimir Putin, was appointed to resolve these crises. However, if the latest reports are correct, we see that the doomsday general, who took office on October 8th, was dismissed again less than three months after fulfilling his duties. This may be related to the debilitating state of the Russian army and the unsatisfactory results since he took office. But are these scant results only about Solovkin? Let's examine the situations that have taken place since Solovkin took office and make our interpretation more clear on this issue. The first point that Solovkin fell out of favor with Vladimir Putin was actually the loss of the Kherson region. When the Ukrainian armed forces launched a counterattack, the Russian army was helpless against this step-by-step -step operation. On October 22nd, Solovkin said in a statement that the time has come to make a difficult decision in Kherson. In fact, from October 13th, Russia evacuated civilians from the western bank of the Dnieper River, including the city of Kherson. As of November 9th, Solovkin suggested to the Russian defense minister Shoigu that the Russian army should withdraw to the left bank of the Dnieper River to restore its combat capability. On November 11th, the withdrawal of the Russian army was completed. At that time, Solovkin and others were under strong pressure in Russia. Criticism of the alleged withdrawal of troops from Russian territory and the surrender of the capital of a Russian state was heard incessantly. Especially Chechen leader Kadyrov and Wagner mercenary group leader Progozin loudly criticized the general. As a second act, Solovkin launched a hard missile salvo against the Ukrainian facilities. Beginning on October 10th, the Russian military launched a large-scale attack on Ukrainian power plants to force Ukraine to return to the negotiating table. The airstrike caused a massive power outage in Ukraine, but Ukraine did not return to the table. On the contrary, Russia was condemned by all parties and Ukraine's anti-air defense capabilities were constantly improved with the help of the United States and other countries. In this way, the missile idea that brought Ukraine back to the negotiating table is bankrupt. Solovkin's second plan also failed. Finally, Solovkin laid all his eggs on the Bakhmut front. A victory here would be a reassurance for him. The Russian army chose to launch significant attacks in Bakhmut, Marinka and elsewhere. An intense battle took place in an area of two square kilometers in repeated attacks at all costs. At Bakhmut, however, the two armies were soared repeatedly and the Russian army made little progress. The Wagner Legion on the offensive suffered even greater losses. Let's take a closer look at the subject in a little while. For this reason, we wanted to draw special attention to it. Based on the three points above, the results of Sorovkin are lackluster, so he can be removed from the post of Commander-in-Chief of Military Operations against Ukraine and removed from military force. As you may recall, Russia has made a rare statement recently. After the attack in which Ukraine destroyed Russian bases, the Kremlin announced that 89 Russian soldiers were killed. 
Recently, the intensity of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine has increased again. First, the Russian army bombarded Ukraine with more than 120 missiles at the end of the year. The Ukrainian army then responded with a big gift and gathered seahorses to attack the Russian army's temporary deployment in Donetsk. In this video, we'll take a close look at what's going on. According to the Russian media report on January 2nd, the Russian Ministry of Defense admitted that the Russian military garrison in Makayevka was attacked on the same day. The head of the local information department said the attack occurred just after midnight on New Year's Eve. Two minutes later, Ukrainian rockets hit the area. While the Ukrainian side claimed that about 400 Russian soldiers were killed and nearly 300 were injured in the attack, the Russian side reported that 89 soldiers were killed. According to the information that has emerged so far, the mobilized units of the Russian army, which had just been deployed to the front, were under attack. They were celebrating New Year's Eve at a local vocational school, which they used as a military base at the time of the incident. And this castle is also the largest temporary Russian army in the region. Four of the six HIMARS artillery shells hit the big Russian stronghold. When we look at previous similar attacks on the mountain, it was not normal to have this much loss. However, due to the large amount of ammunition stored in the fort, the attack caused this stockpiled ammunition to explode, inflicting casualties on the Russian army. Also, according to local officials in Donetsk, about a thousand Russian soldiers were gathered in the building when the attack occurred. The announcement stated that Santa Claus attacked the school, so the Russian senior general believed that this was a deliberate provocation planned by the Ukrainian military. According to the situation at the crime scene, the declaration of 89 people as dead may seem like a distortion. Of course, we also do not know the exact intentions of the Ukrainian army, but local reports and the reports by the Ukrainian general staff indicate that the death toll is much higher than 89. This attack undoubtedly exposed three serious problems of the Russian army. First of all, the location of the Russian army is very haphazard. You should know that this is a non-defense school building and the Russian army has just entered the area and its air defense capability is extremely limited. The commanders of both sides celebrating less than 15 kilometers from the front line will inevitably lose in their vigilance too much. Second, Russia's intelligence system really needs to reflect. It is not the first time they have faced such a tragedy. Former Russian Deputy Prime Minister Rogozin, seen as Putin's successor, was in Donetsk 10 days ago. When the hotel was bombed while celebrating his birthday, the Ukrainian army could always find the best time to attack. It's hard to explain this by coincidence. If not for the presence of a large number of internal ghosts in the Russian army, it is that there are serious gaps in intelligence control and the inability to adjust in time. Finally, where is the new software that the Russian military mentioned last month? On December 3rd, 2022, Russian frontline troops claim to have equipped a large number of new software that could track and destroy the seahorse in the first place. However, given the current situation, the Ukrainian army, which started the attack, is likely to withdraw. Does this mean that the Russian military has not yet mastered effective means against the hippocampus? If this is the case, future attacks by the Russian army will inevitably encounter more problems. When these problems are added together with the existing losses, the dismissal of Solovkin seems an inevitable option. The news that many Wagner mercenaries died, especially in the attack in Donetsk, enraged Wagner group leader Progozin, and Putin may have responded to this anger. Progozin and Kadrov's rising power in the Kremlin is known, so he may have played an active role in this impeachment process. While the Russian army is disintegrating, these developments are increasing day by day, and it seems that Vladimir Putin does not have a very experienced general anymore. Thanks for watching.